4G, 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 it's all the rage, but depending on what your personal definition of 4G is, there's probably at least one carrier out there that disagrees with you. What's going on guys, I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com. Whether you think LTE, WiMAX, HSPA+, all of the above, none of the above, are 4G. Whenever we get two 4G devices in the phone dog labs, well, we do a dog fight to see which one is the best. One of those is a T-Mobile MyTouch 4G slide made by HTC, available at T-Mobile now for $199.99. Now the benefit here, not only does it have a physical QWERTY keyboard, and not only is it an upgrade from the MyTouch 4G, or 3G slide rather, but it has a dual core 1.2 gigahertz processor, Android 2.3, an eight megapixel camera, which T-Mobile basically says is the best camera that any smartphone has ever had. And that goes up against the Samsung Droid Charge on Verizon, one of Verizon's flagship 4G LTE devices. And as you know, their network has received quite a bit of praise in the LTE department for fast, fast speed. So which one's the best? Is it the T-Mobile MyTouch 4G slide with the physical QWERTY keyboard or is it the Samsung Droid Charge with all of its slabby goodness, Android 2.2 and Verizon 4G LTE connectivity? We'll find out in the dogfight, but first special thanks to our buds at Best Buy because when you walk into Best Buy Mobile, you don't have to deal with mail-in rebates. You walk out with either of these devices without messing with paperwork, waiting eight to 10 weeks, that's pretty cool. And let me tell you, they give us a bunch of phones in our One Paw Bandit game. So you know, all those phones that you win in our contests, those are provided by Best Buy Mobile. But enough of that, let's get into it. So to begin part two of the video, I kind of want to show you some of the differences between Sense 3.0, which is over here, and TouchWiz 3.0, which is on the Droid Charge, just to show you how, you know, even though Android 2.2 and 2.3, there are some differences between the two, just to show you how dramatically, you know, overlays like TouchWiz and Sense can really make the Android experience different and either make it a positive one, you know, or a negative one, depending on your personal taste. But you can see, you know, just to go into contacts, for example, we'll go into contacts on both of these, and you can see the difference is here how it looks. And you can see the My Touch version offers this little circular button. That's always to be able to tell if that person's online. It's something that's specific to My Touch. It's a nice little feature. And then down here, what I really like is the way they have this little rotating button down here where you can switch between groups, phone, call log, and voicemail. Now, for example, let's go into, let's just say old man. And what I really like is you can go into the contact info. You can see the home message, website, etc. VIP calls, you know, you can make options. You can divert the calls, change the ringtone. What I like is, let's say, you know, old man and I talk on a regular basis, and I can go over here and see messages, mail, updates, gallery, call log, and more. So if I want to go over to the call log and say, when did we last talk, it's going to bring up the list of calls that we had, you know, since I reset my call log. Um, and then over here, messages, same thing. So any old man messages I have will pop up over here. And to compose, all I have to do is click there, and it'll automatically bring up a new message. So it's just a nice organized structure. They've really done a good job with Sense and all the way up to Sense 3.0, they've really made some improvements. So this is, you know, the best of the best, in my opinion, out of all of the, uh, the Sense builds as it should be since it's the newest version. But like I said, you get that nice little thing over here where you can tell if that person's online or not. And of course I can click Google and see all the contacts that are linked to old man. So nice address book there. Whereas over here, it's a little bit more simplistic, a little bit more to the roots. Uh, when it comes to Android. So we can go over to Old Man and take a look at the same thing here. You can see some tabs at the top. You have history, activities, and media. You have the phone number and the website that uh, Old Man works for. And I have the shortcuts, of course, to call and send messages. But I can go over here to history and see messages, calls. It's all grouped into one history area. And then activities and then media as well. So nothing with Old Man. I can, of course, see the picture and I can dial from there if I want to or message. I just like the organizational flow of this one a little bit better. So I can go in there and you know automatically say, okay, when do we text message last? When do we make a phone call last? Do I have any pictures with him? Do I have any email messages from him, et cetera? It's just a little bit more uh, organized to me, whereas this one sticks a little bit more to Android you know, roots, which is a little bit more open source and kind of uh, ready to be customized. So both are great, but in terms of the overall you know overlay department, I think the MyTouch 4G slide is the one to get just because it's a little bit more organized. I feel like it's a little bit more developed than TouchWiz 3.0. Now, if this were a debate between the Galaxy S2, which is running TouchWiz 4.0, it'd be a whole other battle because 4.0 is a tremendous improvement uh, over 3.0. So you can just see here, we're going to the phone, take a look at that, so you can see how that looks. Now, this is one area where I do have to uh, kind of, you know, give HTC some, or give Samsung some credit, rather. They do a really good job with the call. I think it's very simplistic, very easy to use. And uh, that's one of those things, when I want my keypad pulled up, I want it as simple as possible. And not the case with the MyTouch 4G slide. You know, you can see here, we'll dial old man here, for example, and it shows all of the stuff that pops up and searches contacts. Whereas over here, 
it shows up down here. So it's just a personal thing. I like the way this one shows up a little bit better. As much as I like my you know address book to be full of information and I can access stuff quickly and easily, I kind of like this to be minimalistic and I feel like the, uh, the Droid Charge is a little bit more minimalistic there. So different strokes again, but you can go over here to contacts, groups, and all the way over to voicemail where you can access visual voicemail on this device if you so desire. So both of those are pretty cool. Let's take a look at the web browser on both and you can see what those look like. Super LCD display over here, Super AMOLED Plus display over here. Obviously this one's bigger, so it's gonna be, uh, the image quality is gonna be a little bit nicer. So we'll go over here to phonedog.com. And then on this one we'll do the same thing. And it wasn't coming up the other day when I did a dog fight between this and the Droid 3. For whatever reason the site didn't wanna pop up on the MyTouch 4G slide. So we'll give that a go and see if it does. It looks like it's gonna pull up. But you can see here, phone dog's loading up and of course it's running on Verizon's 4G LTE. And you can see it loads up pretty quickly and it looks good on that 4.3 inch display. And you know, the camera doesn't do it justice. I know I say this all the time, but the Super AMOLED Plus, gorgeous, gorgeous display. It really pops, the colors look good. Like the blue and the banner of phone dog looks fantastic. And just the colors are rich. Netflix, the Netflix ad is very rich and just looks good. And you can see, I'm down here, I'll pinch to zoom in and out so you can see some of the speed differences. You know, there's some checkerboarding over there in the right hand corner if you see it, but overall, Performance is pretty decent, and I've been impressed with the performance. Now, the real uh, bottleneck here, we'll go over here to Windows, and they do a great job with the preview. It shows me where I left off, shows me it's phone dog, add a new window, and I go back here. It shows me how many windows are open, and I can scroll back and forth between those two. Now, where the real kicker is, once you get to four windows, that's all you can have open. It shuts you off. So we go to new window, whoops, new window, and then we'll add a fourth one just for fun, and then I go to add a fifth one you can see the buttons grayed out. I can only have four windows open max. A little bit of a limitation there in a bottleneck, so I, I don't care for that, but the, uh, the display is fantastic. But just browser performance to browser performance, the uh, MyTouch 4G slide wins. I mean, the buttery smooth browsery, or browser performance, buttery smooth browsery performance. It's one of the more interesting things I've said today. But you can see, you know, performance is pretty good over here, and you can see windows. Shows you that preview, and of course, I can access the second window, and then jump back if I want to, and it picks me up right where I left off. So quick and easy to use, HTC does a good job there, and with that dual core processor, this thing really flies in the browser department. Let's take a look at the uh, Quadrant Standard and see which one comes out on top there. Now keep in mind, dual core processor over here, single core over here, but take any speed test with a grain of salt because it really doesn't give a comparison you know, when it comes to day-to-day -to -day use. Uh, and the MyTouch 4G slide really doesn't like Quadrant Standard, so I may have to uh, turn it off and get that score for you, not so not to waste time, but uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt. These are this is more for the nerds that want to see the, uh, the benchmark scores, but in day-to-day -day use, both of these will be fine. Call quality on both of these very impressive. Now, battery life, the Droid Charge is the one that takes the cake. 1600 milliamp hour battery over here, 1520 milliamp hour battery over here. It doesn't sound like much, and with the smaller display, you'd think the MyTouch 4G slide is great, and it is. It's very, very good. It's one of the better ones, but this thing, it does a great job. I just can't, you know, speak highly enough about the battery on the Droid Charge, especially with the latest update that uh, Samsung pushed through a couple of weeks back. Fantastic, battery life's been very good. I think you'll be happy with either in the battery life department, but a little bit better over here on the, uh, the Droid Charge. And actually worked the first time that time, device 1800. So the MyTouch 4G slide is at 1800, whereas this one's still loading up. But call quality on both, pretty strong, uh, and the earpiece volume is loud as well. Over here, 958, so 958, 1800 over here. Again, take it with a grain of salt. The Hummingbird processor chipset never does well with uh, Quadrant Standard, but just to give you an idea, side by side of the comparison, that's what those are like. Now we gotta do a speed test because we wanna see, you know, HSPA Plus 4G versus 4G LTE 4G. We wanna see the differences in the speed. So we'll load up speed tests so you can see. We'll go over here and change the server. We'll change it to Greensboro. Since uh, Greensboro seems to be the one that's working a little bit better lately. The Charlotte one's had some issues. So we'll do that one. And wait for this to load up. Let's see which one it loads up on. Greensboro, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> we'll begin the test so you can see. Now, 4G LTE just blows out of the water. Now, it's still a very young network. I found that when using mobile hotspot or using it for anything longer than about 15 minutes, 4G cuts in and out on Verizon. It's not not ready for mainstream, not ready for data cards, for mobile hotspots, things like that, but if you're using it for casual browsing on the phone, look at that, 14.40 megabits per second, six megabits per second on the upload. Over here, you're getting four, 
which is definitely good, don't get me wrong, I mean, that's one of the better uh, GSM speeds. You know, pit that up against like a two megabit per second average for AT&T, and then 1.98 megabits per second over here. So much, much faster on the, uh, the Droid Charge. That said, you, know, you have an all around a device that's all around better equipped over here, so that's something to keep in mind. Now, last but not least, it's camera time. We're gonna do eight megapixel camera test on both of these. And like I said, you know, T-Mobile and uh, HTC claim this is the best camera on any smartphone. What I will tell you, it's the best on any Android smartphone. But it's still just a little bit behind the camera on the iPhone, and in my opinion, on the N8 by Nokia as well. So we'll see here. We'll load it up on T-Mobile's, or load it up on T-Mobile's pin that I have. And you can see I'm zooming in. And it's pretty quick zoom. Whenever I come in here, you can see how the circle focuses. Gets it zoomed in. And then there is our picture. So almost zero shutter speed. You can see my thumb, the clarity there. We can zoom in on the pin. The clarity is pretty impressive. It's very, very good on the Droid Charge as well. I'll show you. Try to do the same picture. Let's see what it came out like. Just to give you a comparison, we'll zoom out there. And I'm giving it to the MyTouch 4G slide. It's been much, much better over here. Still very good. With either of these are going to be great in day-to-day -day use. Little minor pictures here or there. This is a very good camera for Android, but this is the current champion in the camera department on Android. So, you know, a dogfight winner has to be declared, and there are a lot of pros, a lot of cons about both of these devices. But all in all, the winner is the MyTouch 4G slide. Just because it offers the best blend of features, it's up to date in the processor department. It has a great 8 megapixel camera. It's running Android 2.3 out of the box with the latest version of Sense, since, <coughs> excuse me, Sense 3.0, as opposed to this one, which is running Android 2.2, came out with kind of an older version of TouchWiz 3.0, whereas the Galaxy S2 is already out with Gingerbread and with a newer version of their overlay. So this one's out, it's brand new, it's fresh, it's ready to go, and it has a keyboard. Even though it's not the best keyboard in the world, it's still you know nice to have a physical QWERTY, and it retains a small size. It's not much bigger with the hump on the back of this one than the, uh, the Droid Charge itself. Now the benefit, you know, you look at this one, HDMI port over there on the side, and it has some other perks, a great battery life over here, a bigger display, Super AMOLED Plus is nice, but all in all, the best bang for the buck and the best when it comes to all around features goes to the MyTouch 4G slide. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with both of these devices. Be sure to like us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash PhoneDog. We're doing the greatest tech giveaway ever every Tuesday, every Thursday at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern, 3 o'clock p.m. Pacific. Check it out, facebook.com slash phone dog. You could win a tablet, and be sure to follow me on Twitter as well, phone dog underscore Aaron, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash phone dog AB. Let me know what you think about both of these devices. Think I made the right decision. Think the one with the genius button, where I can just click that button and automatically come in here and say like, call John Doe or call old man. Let's call old man. Please We'll try to do that. Is this the one that should have won? Call old man. Or is it, there you go. Or is it the droid charge? Let me know, phone dog underscore Aaron. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time. I'm gonna take a call from the old man.